driving to work, I had a bruise on my neck that I felt. I didn't see it and I, I rubbed it. And after I rubbed it, about five seconds later, I felt like I was gonna pass out while I was talking to myself. And I was like, what's going on? As I was driving, I couldn't see out of my left eye. I was driving along the center divide a couple times. And it was like a dream, like you're having this dream, like something was going on, but you can't stop it. I ended up running off the road. Finally, somebody had called 911 that I was a drunk driver. I remember the call. It came in as a single vehicle traffic accident. I remember as we walked up, the vehicle was still on. He was actively trying to put it into gear. He was talking to me on my left window and I couldn't see him or hear him. I heard him from my right side and I, I remember saying, where are you? And he had to yell at me. And I looked over and oh, hey. There was kind of a look of confusion on his face. I asked him if he had been drinking or taking any drugs. He uh, said no and then I asked him to smile to see if he had any facial droop smiled for him and uh, he's like, I think you're having a stroke, buddy. We're going to get you some help. Immediately saw that he had um, facial droop. Told back to my partner that it was a stroke code. Part of our stroke protocol, we have EMS pre-notification when there's a stroke code en route. They actually send a page saying we're on the way. The MICN call, stroke code coming, ETA five minutes. So we knew Stefan was on the way. They took me to the hospital. I got there and there's a sea of doctors because they had got the call that I was coming in. So I had gone to work a little early to get a couple things done and a call comes in and it's the hospital at UCSD and they said, your husband's okay, he's had a stroke. And I'm thinking, that's not okay. I'll be there in 10 minutes. And I knew my only job was just to drive safe. It was actually a really chaotic day in our emergency rooms. He was the third stroke code within a few minutes. And when he hit the door, it was actually quite obvious to us that he was suffering a stroke. And he was paralyzed on the left side of his body. We transported him to do a CT and a CT angiogram. We were first able to rule out that there was no blood in the brain, but there was actually a very large clot sitting on the right side of his brain. We had already contacted Dr. Kalesi, our interventional neurosurgeon, when we saw the clot on CT. The stroke neurologist at UCSD reached out to me by phone, said that we had a young man who was coming in within the therapeutic window uh, with a confirmed M1 occlusion and that they thought would benefit from a thrombectomy. I get into the emergency room and I tell him that I'm there to see Stefan and he had had a stroke. She comes back and says, okay, they're ready for you. And just so you know, there's eight doctors. They had given us three choices. Last one was to do an embolectomy, go up through his groin and pull the clot out. I thought, well, we're gonna go with that one because that just seems like the quickest way out of what we're in. So I go into the waiting room and Dr. Kalesi came out to me and he said, you have every right to expect the best. Uh, I, I can tell you three or five years ago, that's a very different, difficult conversation. And so uh, I, I was very, very optimistic in, in the conversation with her that we were going to be able to get her uh, and her husband a, a good result. And, uh, and we moved forward. Um, I remember having this this urge to sit up like so bad. And I asked, can I, can I sit up? I remember him yelling at me, you can't sit up. I'm in your brain right now. And shortly after that, I had this, this, this headache that came and I, and I went, ow, and he goes, yeah, you're gonna feel that. When he was done with the procedure, uh, he, you know, he said, okay, I'm out of your brain, you can relax, you did a really good job. And immediately I started trying to move my hand, trying to move my hand. And to me, within five minutes, I was moving my hand. And I was trying to move my foot, move my foot. I was like, I can move my hand, I can move my foot. And I heard, we got movement. But they, they yelled and like, it just, you get overwhelmed, you start, I start crying. Uh, usually they're not quite as spirited and interactive a, a, as Stefan was. Uh, the, the payoff of that though is, is when we were able on the single pass to actually open that artery for him, um, we saw the immediate uh, result in terms of the restoration of movement uh, on the left side of the body. And, and I can tell you it's a rare and very special privilege uh, to, to have that experience and be able to share that with the patient, obviously in real time. And, the and he comes back in 20 minutes. But here he is, he's looking at me, he's got this light in his eyes, there's magic in the air, and he's, he's moving his entire left side. Um, and it was pretty remarkable because right after moving the clot, we actually saw Stefan moving his hand and he had immediate recovery of his symptoms uh, and only continued to improve after that point until the point that he was actually back to normal. When they wheeled me out, um, you could hear the doctors and the nurses that saw me go into the, into the operating room and you could hear this, there's no way. That's what, that, that's what I hear, no way, that's him? There's no way that's him. How's that him? And that's what I was hearing, I was like, oh, I must have been really bad going in. I think it was five minutes, they're rolling him back out of that room, and my husband's literally waving with his left hand. <laughs> the fact that he's 
a young father of two made it all the more exceptional. So it, I think it was one of the reasons why both myself and our entire team kind of come to work every day is to be able to, to make a difference in a case like that. I was really happy to hear recently that he's actually back to his normal activities and he's able to work 100% in his job blow drying without any difficulties, which was actually a problem with at the very beginning. So uh, he's really back to his normal life, which I'm happy to hear about. This procedure, this hospital, came in on a Wednesday and they gave us Tuesday. And very rarely in your life do you get a rewind, and this gave us what we came in with. So I'm so thankful for, for this procedure that UCSD was um, able to offer me, and just thankful that I was able to have the chance so I could spend my life with my family, my son, daughter, wife, parents, and everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that Stefan is doing so well and that he's surfing again. I'd like to thank the American Stroke Association and Medtronic for their commitment to ending stroke. Remember to learn how to spot a stroke fast. F for face drooping. A for arm weakness. S for speech difficulty. T for it's time to call 911.